Are you ready to take a deeper dive into the settings of Gmail? Hi, I am Pixel Pia, and that is exactly what we are going to do in today's video. So let's move over to my computer. So here we are in the Gmail account we have been working on in the earlier tutorials. And today we're going to click on the little cogwheel here for settings and see all settings. We start with the tab for general. It is actually 31 different settings you can do under just this first tab. We are not gonna deep dive into all of them, but I am gonna mention them. So first you set your default language. If you change that here, it will change on all my Google products, not just email. Next, we have phone number and it wants you to set a default country code. Then we have maximum page size. And this is how many email conversations you want to have shown on each page. Default is 50 and I leave it at that. Then we have undo send, and this is the first one I'm going to change. This is how much time after you hit the send button, you have to regret it. Maybe you send it and right away it hits you. Oh, I forgot something. So here you can choose from five seconds up to 30 seconds. I will put 30 seconds in mind because I am pretty forgetful. So. After I hit send, I have 30 seconds to go to my send folder and stop Gmail from sending that mail. I can open it and I can add the part I had forgotten. Default reply behavior is when you hit reply, if it's reply to just the sender or reply all if they have hidden other persons receiving the mail. Hover actions is if you hover over an email, if it will pop up these alternatives to archive, delete, mark as read and all of that. Send an archive. This is show send an archive button in replies or do not show it. Default textile. Here you can choose either just sans serif in general or a serif or you can choose one of these fonts to be your default style. And under here, this text, this is what your body text will look like, shows you. So if I change this, for example, to Georgia, you see how this part of the text changed. And here I can choose small, normal, large, or huge. And you see, for every change I do here, it shows you the change down in this little text box. You can also choose your text color. You can remove formatting here. And it goes back to where it was as default. Images, you can choose to always display them or for the Gmail to ask before this option, also this Enables dynamic email, which is the next point. A dynamic email is really just an email with HTML code in the background. So you can include images and you can change the background color of an email and you can add fancy things. Then we have a few points here that's totally up to you. If you want Gmail to have suggestions on or off for grammar, for spelling, if you want the autocorrect on or off. Then we have Smart Compose. This is predictive writing suggestions. That is when you start to write a word and you can see in a more dimmed font that Gmail suggests the word you are probable to write and you can just hit enter for them to complete that word. Smart Compose is after a while Gmail will learn your writing style and it will 
suggest writing according to the style that most fits your style of writing. And you can have that on or off. Conversation view is how your different emails and replies and maybe someone else reply again and you send back and forth how they will be shown. I like the conversation view. It's like one email, the reply, then the next email and so forth. Nudges. This is email that either you have marked as important or something that seems that you should reply to. You can have this on for suggest emails to reply to. Gmail thinks that this is maybe something that you should reply to or a follow-up email. It will move them up higher up in your list just as a nudge to remind you about these specific emails. Smart reply is that Gmail suggests using AI a way to reply to a mail that you are replying to. Smart features and personalization. This is for Gmail, chat and me that they can use those functions to personalize all the suggestions we just talked about. And also smart features and personalization for all Google products you can turn on here. So even if it learns your writing style in Gmail, it can use that learning when you write a Google Doc, for example. Package tracking, that's up to you. And then we have desktop notification. If you want little pop-ups when you get a Gmail on your desktop. I have those off. I regularly go in and check my emails, so I don't need them. Then we have the stars. I have just one star here in use, but you can choose four stars that gives it a little different symbol. For example, this one, the red one, red bang it means, it's for important. The green one, the check mark is, okay, this is done, I can mark this conversation as done. And then we have two different stars. Or you can have all the stars to choose from when you start a email. And if you start an email, it will end up in the start folder here. Then we have keyboard shortcut. And I will show you here by open learn more how many preset shortcuts we have. For example, just when it comes to compose and chat, we have all those. When it comes to formatting text, actions and so forth. Button labels, that just shows how, if it will be just icons or if it will be just text. Then you can also, in general, go in and change your profile picture. This one, create contacts for autocomplete. If you send an email to a new person or company, a new email address, you can have this marked for when I send a message to a new person, add them to other contacts so that I can auto-complete them next time. That means that they will be added into your contacts and we will talk much more about contacts in a later video when we talk about the organization. But this automatically adds that email to your contacts or you can choose I'll add contacts myself. Importance signal for ads and this is just how you want to receive ads. Personalization, odds and what type of ads you have been shown and then signature. This can be very important and we are actually going to create a new signature here for my account the geeky boomer we name it and click create and here we have the geeky boomer first i'm gonna add an image so i click on image down there and here i have an image on my drive that i already have uploaded there i can use a url to a website or i can upload an image i am gonna choose this one and 
this is a very big image originally. So down here, now it shows original size. I can choose large, medium or small. I want it to be a small image. Then I can underneath here write my email address. I can write my website. And if I have any other information I want included in my signature, I can change font. That won't change the font for anything else. I can, maybe I want them in italic. Maybe I want my text color for my font to be in a different color. Maybe I want it to be bold. I mark it. And I click bold. As you saw here, when I go into color, I can choose a background color and a text color. I can link this email address first. I just click the link symbol down here and it is automatically linked to this address. So that is a link that people can use when they reply. I can align it left, center, right. I can add a list and you can have several different signatures. I'm just creating this one for now. Down here, signature defaults for new email use and for reply forward use. I set this signatures to the default for both of them. And then you can choose insert signature before quoted text in replies and remove the line that precedes it. So my signature comes before the copy of the email I'm replying to. Personal level indicators. Just shows with one forward arrow or two forward arrows if the message was sent to your address, your email address, one forward arrow. If it was sent to only you and there are no B, C or C, C in that. It has two arrows. Snippets is that it shows a little bit of the email content itself when you look at your email list. No snippets or snip. And then we have something that it's called vacation responder. But let's say that you maybe you're not on vacation, but something happens so for a week you won't be able to answer any gmail you can set up this vacation responder on and from this day let's say from july 1st to july 8th that's for a week and you put in a subject line I just called, said, sorry, I can't read your answer right now. And then you can put in a little text there. I am unavailable to get or send any emails for right now. Please send your questions to selpia at mail.com and I will highlight pixelp.gmail.com and link that. And if someone sends me an email during this specific week that I set up here, Gmail will automatically send this message to that person. You can choose to only send this response to people in your contacts, for example, to avoid spam mail and things like that. You can put only send the response to people in my contacts. And when I have gone through all of this under my general settings tab, I have to remember to say set. So now we are back in my inbox. And the only thing I really changed today was I added a signature. So let's hit compose here. And here you see my picture and my email and my website is all here. If I for some reason want to send this email without the signature, I can just mark it and then hit backspace and it is gone. That was the general 
settings tab. As you can see, we have a lot of other tabs in settings. Next video, we are going to focus on account and import. And I will show you how you can have several different email accounts to come to your Gmail box. So you don't have to go, for example, you have a Yahoo or you have, like I have my Pixel Pia email, I can import those contacts and those email into my Gmail. So I just have to go to one place to check all my mail. We will also look at labels, which will help us organize this. So all my emails that come to pixelpia at thegeekyboomer.com, for example, ends up in a separate folder. But enough is enough. And I think we have done enough today. As I said, there are so many settings that we still haven't looked at. So if you want to learn more about settings and organization in your Gmail account, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified on when that video comes up. Until next time, bye!